Our first dungeon, yeah, you weirdly in a Zelda game where you get yourself to the first dungeon basically within starting distance of the game. Now, where we heard of that before, all right. And speaking of like uh Zelda games and whatnot, I just saw that new uh direct that came out and having Zelda being a main protagonist for once in her life. I mean, that's fine. I, I, I wish that was a bit of a thing for many years now. I'm actually quite excited for Echoes of Wisdom, honestly. Cause I feel like there should be, I think, I feel like it's kind of an overdone. I think it, overdone for Link being the main hero and everything. Was he, look, look, Alex, man. You can see down below this web using the up button. Oh yeah, it's for up button also brings you into first person mode. Which does use aviation controls to look up and down. So basically pushing up on the control stick will make you look down. Pulling back will make you look up. And then some. So bear that in mind. But yeah, I'm really excited for Echoes of Wisdom. It's I feel like it's going to be a game that will really shake up the Zelda formula. Look at this wall. The vine's growing in Minecraft's surface. Maybe you can use it to climb. Oh, yeah. we haven't. The game hasn't really told us. They use the R button to actually use your shield to, to basically pull it out when you need to. Not R button on the Switch version. No, that brings up the, uh, the N64 app and everything. So, oh, we got ourselves a Skotilla. A school, a school Wallata. It's kind of weird they have two different versions for this, even though it's the exact same model. Be careful not to touch it. Well, I won't touch it. I want to open this. And this gets our kind of feel of what the game's going to be, is that any important item is going to have this opening sequence. First of all, is the dungeon map. You can press start to get into the subscreens and look at the map subscreen. Now you can see blue chambers are places you have already visited. Your current location is the flashing room. Good luck trying to see it anywhere else, because without a certain other item, you're not going to know exactly where you are on the map. And basically, the, uh, and basically the in-game map isn't really going to help you all that much either, because it's basically without the certain item, the compass, you cannot really see what's in this map room. You can open a door by standing in front of it and pressing A. You should know this. You've been opening... Actually, you know what? Your room has not had an actual opening door. I'm actually... Why does the Dinka Tree have a door? Is this thing a real or a robot? I have no idea. Oh, I'm going in different timelines now. Oh, uh, well, pay attention to what the action says. That's a blue icon on top of the screen. And I think that's like the only time I think Nobby really breaks the fourth wall at times. And we get a first into our first mini boss. This is our Deku. A Deku scrub, and that's it. You knock him one seed back into him, and he knocks himself out. Forgive me, Master. If I give you a clue, will you let me go? When you jump at a high cliff, if you hold forward on the control stick, you will roll on the ground when you land and not get hurt from the fall. I can't guarantee it will work, though, if the cliff is really, really high. <laughs> well, try if you're feeling bold. <laughs> Uh, so much for him. He's gone. He gave us a heart piece, that our heart, can, little heart item. Thank you very much. Now, the game wants you to jump on that platform. You can just skip it. I say just go up to this. Because when you jump on that platform, you basically, you know, it basically drops to the ground. And, uh, you have to use the aforementioned item you're getting here. The, uh, opportunity. And that is your slingshot. You found the fairy slingshot. It's like a bow, only but worse. Use it on the C buttons to basically hold out and use it as a C stick, and you can use it with that. Don't worry. It's revolutionary about that. If you want to shoot right away, use your first press C button, hold down C for a little bit longer to get a seed ready. All right, so now we need to put our items on. So we're going to put ourselves on the bottom C button here. I'm going to put sticks on the left. There we go. And now we put this up here. And Nobby will actually give you a lock on of where you should really shoot some items, really. So it basically becomes that it becomes like, you know, Nobby just becomes your cursor and everything else, but. So let's go and continue this dungeon. This dungeon is not very long. It's just a lot of. It's basically a tutorial dungeon. A lot of Zelda games kind of did this, you know, early on. I think, well, I think Ocarina of Time is kind of the biggest contender of it. Only just really because it was, you know, it was the first 3D Zelda game of all time. So they had to tell people how to 
do certain objectives and such. So having a dungeon that was kind of on the easy side was kind of a better thing. The only problem about going in the first person mode with the what these things are. Oh, there you go. That item we need. You got Deku seeds. They're small, hard seeds. They can use as bullets for your slingshot. And you can only hold up to 30, but you can um, increase them to at least 50 by basically using mini games you got, can encounter later on down the adventure. They're not, I would say, it's not really necessary to upgrade the slingshot very much, just because it it hardly ever becomes an item useful uh, or later on. When basically a, another item comes in later and basically almost kind of makes the thing mute, except for maybe one thing about it. Like said, we need to light a fire, a torch here, so we get a stick out. And we must light this on fire. The stick will only last a few minutes, so bear in mind that, so... That basically unlocks that for now. We jump on a context-sensitive switch, and it basically brings this up here, so as our time limit. We come back here, ooh. Jump right here, and then jump like this. Do a roll jump. Uh, doing a roll before an actual jump. Actually does make Link jump a little further than normal, so use that to your advantage if you're wanting to shave off some time. And you got yourself the compass! Now you can see the locations of many hidden things in the dungeon, including yourself and chests. Later games would basically combine these two together. Like, almost in fact, the compass almost becomes a non-existent thing, and it's kind of weird that way too, I've been thinking about that lately. Where, like, the compass just gets a complete destroyed and just becomes part of the map. Like, the map just has it. Also, a new item, we get the Deku Nut. We can use these to stun enemies at will. It only works on a few select enemies, though. Some enemies are kind of can block themselves from doing it. But once you do can pull it off and uh, use this same fire, it's actually a pretty invaluable item. People kind of basically shove it off. What's not very suitable is these little bad boys right here. Golden Sculptulas. There are over 100 of these in the game. Hundreds. And you'll have to go between a young and the adult Link at any given time to do this with. And it, it's, it's very tedious. <laughs> like, the first thing is like you get 10, 20, 30, 40, and eventually 50. And you get all these kind of unique rewards. And, um... But once you get past 50, it becomes from 50 to 100. And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like they put all these sculptures in, but didn't give us enough reward for getting them all. And what you do when you get them all, you just get, well, you get infinite money. In a game that's not really needing it. So Skulltula is our new enemy type here. It's a big, it's soft belly as its weak point. We must jump slash into it. If you lock on, if you lock on with Z, uh, with Z, and hit the A button, you do the jump slash attack. It's basically a, it's basically your a, a sword attack, but double the damage. And it's actually really worth it to pull it off at times. What we have to do now is do a dive and hopefully not miss the ground. There we go. I've done that many times where I've missed it and it falls me down and hurts me something fierce. So bear that in mind. So make sure you take a look uh, before you make the dive. But this is where we also find out that gold sculptures really can't lock onto them very much. Only certain items can basically lock onto the gold sculptures. Which is the... Actually, no, actually, the gold sculptures are not locked onto. It's only the, uh, the token that you get from it is what's locked on by the Z-targeting move. Kind of weird. I guess they want to make the gold sculptures kind of, uh, like... Like, they, I, they really had no idea what to do with this. Because they gave you two sculptures here right out on the row. I guess they really want you to try to go after this. Now, it, it, I think the belief that this one gold sculpture is meant you're supposed to get later... But you can just jump, you can just, you know, do a roll jump off of the ledge, and you can get it. There's an item later on down the game that you collect in the third dungeon, and it's supposed to help you, help Link, uh, collect stuff from afar. But, really, it doesn't really change that much, really, in terms of it. Like I said, there's a lot of items in this game that kind of basically go from useful to less useful, the more you basically get more items. Kind of odd, to say the least. You got a recovery heart! Your heart has now been increased. Well, refilled, not increased. Now, there are heart pieces in this game. You get four of them, and you allow you to get a container heart. With heart containers happening after every boss fight. So, you're going to... And that's how you get, that's how you get more hearts in this game. 
You gain more hearts by basically doing, you know, just the quest lines and everything to find chests to find locations that'll have heart pieces. Heart pieces are just located around the world. But sometimes they can be rewards for, you know, winning a minigame for the first time. So bear that in mind. Oh, please forgive me, Master. I never do it again. If you spare me, I'll tell you something cool. You will never beat my brothers up ahead unless you punish them with the proper order. We call it the Nintendo order. The order is two, three, one. 23 is number one. Do you think I'm a traitor? <laughs> so we never that for later. We're gonna need that later. But what's interesting though is that the slingshot can now hurt ice switches. I mean, if you got shot in the eye, man, I'd be like, ah, you get that little like a cream of dirt and salt or dirt and sand in your eye, and you're like, oh, you have to close your eye, you have to wing it out just a little bit, you know, yeah, like that, just to be on the safe side here. After you get into the water, if you hold down the A, you can dive. I bet there are some interesting things underwater. And that's where you sat for the golden scale in that regard. Like, there's a, there's a silver scale to help you dive deeper, but there's a golden scale, which basically only allows you to dive really deep, and it's only, only useful for maybe one heart piece, and it's hardly good for anything else. So you want to hit this switch so it lowers down the water. It is under a time limit. You have to jump here onto this platform and then crouch with the shield out. And this allows you to get under this little weird bar, this weird uh, log that's got sticks or spikes on it. There you go. Stand next to this block and you'll grab hold of it with A. While holding A, you can push or pull it. If you stand next to the block and press A, you can uh, forwards, you can towards the block. You can climb on top of it. Navi, I've been doing this ever since before you came to me. It's not like I know how to live. <sighs> well, pay attention to what the action button icon says. I'm breaking the fourth wall every chance I get. And I feel like it's weird they see the uh, the Gerudo symbol in all these boxes. It's almost like the Gerudo came in here and basically, you know, tormented the... It made this... In, I feel like it's almost like a Gerudo fortress in terms of what it looks like. Oh, you want that? You want to fight? Oh, well, ow. Hey, get out of here, you. Now, the, now, this puzzle here, we have to light a stick on fire. And when we have Dig Balls, they're constantly standing up and giving you sticks. You're never going to run out of sticks for any, for any reason. Well, like, I don't... The fact is that if you're going to have... If you're running out of sticks, something you're doing is wrong. Though, to be fair... A stick in this version of the game, at least I think so anyway, at least it was in the GameCube and the original N64 version, which I'm assuming this is what this version is all about, the American version, is that the Deku Stick is about as powerful as the Master Sword if you jump slash with it. <laughs> which means it can make a real, uh, make a boss fight very early in the game, almost very trivial <laughs> to point out that way. Are oh, you gonna fight me again, huh? I'll jump slash you there. There you go. Now, there is a gold sculpture that's later on in this dungeon. You have to come back here after you collect a certain item, basically, to get it. But also, you have to get, like, an item from uh, the second area of the game and such. And it's just like, you have to basically complete the entirety of Young Link's adventure starting off just to get access to one gold sculpture in this place. Again, the game forces you to basically to backtrack if you want to go after Gold Sculptulus. And I know I'm not I'm not going after that technicality, but still. Because I've never really gotten all the Gold Sculptures. I've got enough to basically to get like some of the basic rewards and all. But I don't really go after them very much. Because again, it get, at the end of all, it gives you free money. Ow! I'll stun you. There you go. Keep getting hit. So the Deku Stick is down here, which basically means we have to rem we have to basically light this little spider web on fire. Oh, no, I don't want to climb up, Link. Myself, stop doing that. Time for you to push yourself forward. So that you can come right here and push it back down, so that we can get to this torch over here. And basically, um, and basically get ourselves a sort of like, you know, <laughs> way to get ourselves southern. Go a bit deeper into the, into the depths. And to basically, like, you know, we're going to the root system of, of the Great Deku Tree at this point. 
Oh, stand still, you. I want some hearts. Give me some hearts. Come on now. All good, a heart. At least one heart, that's good. I just don't want to die on the first boss. So to be fair, I'm going to try to see if the great Deku, of this Deku sticks will actually damage the first boss as, as well as I think it should. So I'm not wasting all my sticks and everything. So what we have to do here is that we have to... This dungeon is actually really small. It's kind of weird. There's really not much of a mini boss in the child dungeons of, of Orphea Kind. It only happens in the adult versions. We want to light that up like there. And now we can jump down. Oh, they actually give you hearts down here. I kind of forgot they did that. <laughs> oh, but this is where we have to put input that code. And it's Nintendo's favorite code. We must put in 23 as number one. So that means we have to hit two first here. Come on, dude. You'll be stunned. If you do it wrong, they just basically reset and you just have to do it over again. I wonder if they actually had to put that code in just so that you could... Oh. The last guy tries to get away, but you go up to him and say, How do you know our little secret? How infuriating! Means someone's a snitch! It's so annoying that I'm going to reveal the secret of the Queen Goma to you. In order to administer the Coupe de Grace to Queen Kumba, Goma, you strike it with the sword while she's stunned. Oh, Queenie. Not about that. And actually, she's kind of... She, she's weak to the weapon you got in this dungeon, but... At the same time, though... <laughs> it's uh, basically the two items you have in your item screen there, and those C buttons are all well, you really need to take this boss down. Anyway... We've gotten everything in the dungeon. Let's go after the boss. And this is where basically everyone breaks the game to get to the end screen credits. <laughs> this boss fight here. I'm basically tricking the game and whatnot. But I'm not a speedrunner. I don't break the games. I just play them. Only good just happen when they uh, come intentionally. Oh, and it's closed off on us. And again, I love this, the theme of this. Like, the, it just gets dark. You have to go in the first person mode and let the Goma see you. And she is with math involved! She has math at her disposal! Our first boss! The Parasonic Armored Archerid Goma! We must... Gotta put down our... You guys, you, her eye will open up and that's where we have to shoot it with the... Like this, and then we just... There we go, like that. Oh, I gotta just... Yeah, you have to... Okay, I can do that. Okay, there we go. I was wondering why I couldn't jump slash with the stick. So now Goma... After hitting Goma, she's gonna go up on top. And yes, she's female, because she actually gives birth to her little kids. If you wanted to hit her, well, she can... You can not stun her when she has the red eye. So when her red eye comes out, then you can actually hit her with the... I'm surprised it didn't hit her with the... Thing, but she gets her little Goomba or uh, her offspring to come out and basically to harm you. Really, this is just to get you some more health or basically item for your for the item in question of your map of your uh, slingshot. Nothing really more than that, really. Come on, get game. Let me lock on. I'm on you. There we go. And there you go. Two swords, two stick strikes, kills her. Again, the stick is just as powerful as the master sword. <laughs> Goma got defeated by a stick. Some ominous creature, some ominous being in the background is like, What do you mean it got he my my cursed spider was destroyed by a stick? It was eating the great Deku tree from inside out, and yet still somehow it was defeated by a stick. So you get yourself a heart container, and it increases your health point by one. Remember that. Sometimes you can miss it, but if you do miss it, you have to make the trick all the way back here. There are no warp points, except for this one here that takes you out of the dungeon. Let's go, shall we?